I'm a researcher and a storyteller. I like the darker subjects, but I love comedy. And that's why finding this story was perfect. It's a catalog of courage, karmic repercussions, sacrifice, sex, a deadbeat son, open marriage, even a cameo of Elon Musk. Everything I love about Hollywood. Join me now. The Hollywood Files. Episode one. Not everything you sees is black and white. This story really is about Mary's son, Charles. Charles loved his mother's chocolate. And he always said that one day he would open a chain of chocolate stores. Basically, he was gonna market the hell out of his mother's chocolates. But in fact, it would take losing everything before that dream would ever begin to come true. For those of you who grew up on the West Coast, when you think of C's candies, you think of the black and white tiled floor, the grandmother's cameo on the wall, Mary C. You also think of the friendly ladies dressed in white handing you a free sample. Happy childhood memories. As for me, every birthday, Christmas, Easter, every celebration, was met with a trifecta. Sea suckers, chocolate covered almonds, and molasses chips. I came across an ad for Mother's Day and it had to be from the, either the 30s or the 40s. It was undated. But what caught my eye wasn't just that it was old. Nope. Is that it listed several addresses, two of which were right in the center of Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard. I know those addresses. Those are in prime real estate, the era for the most glamorous time in Hollywood. And the fact that there were C's candy locations there made me think there might be something more to the story. An unlisted address came up right on the cusp of K-Town, Koreatown. I drove over there and as I pulled up, I recognized the building. I had seen photos of that building, but I didn't know that that was actually their very first location. Opened in 1921. That's when I started digging. Little did I know I was about to open Pandora's box. The C's family lived in the snowy wilderness outside of Ontario, Canada, in an area that's actually called the Thousand Islands. And Yes, that's where the salad dressing Gross. came from. Mary and her husband, Alexander, actually ran a resort called the Tremont Park Summer Resort. Mary would always make her chocolates for the guests. I only wish I would have lived in that time period to taste what her chocolates would have been like a hundred years ago. But first, her son Charles would bark on a different career path. He would go to pharmacology school and become a pharmacist, and he would open two pharmacies, all pretty straightforward, in a little tiny town called Timmins, and he would give it a freaking awesome name. Well, he wouldn't just give it an ordinary name like Rite Aid or Walgreens. No, he was much, much more of a clever man. He would name it Pills and Things because he sold pills and things. I'm guessing aspirin and maybe safety pins. His pharmacy would actually become the local hang for the boys. So I'm guessing Charles was probably a very social butterfly. 1911, that was Charles' year for both the highest points in his life and also the lowest point. One day in July, and it was only five months after he had just married Florence, there was a fire that swept through the town of Timmins. Charles grabbed Florence, or Florence could have grabbed Charles, she could have been a very strong woman, and they ran towards Lake Porcupine. I don't know why that name is important, I just love the name of it. If there was a Lake Porcupine, I would run towards it. So they ran inside the lake to seek shelter and they watched everything around them burn, including 
pills and things and their home. But Charles, he would bounce back stronger. He also realized that now was the time to start to take actions on his dream of opening a chain of candy stores. Once the smoke cleared, literally, he and Florence moved 500 miles out to Toronto, Canada and worked for an American chocolate bulk manufacturer called Merkins. And there he would learn the ropes and he and Flo would have two kids. And then devastation hit again. His father, Alexander, died. He packed everything up. Bye, Alexander. Including his wife and kids. And they drove 2,000 miles to Los Angeles. And I was doing the math because it wasn't long after they opened their first store, they actually had their third child. So I was counting backwards about nine and a half months, and that would mean Flo got knocked up on the way to LA. So good going, Charles. This would have been in 1920. There were already hundreds of candy confectioners doing business. This was right after the end of World War I. People had money and they wanted to spend it. So they spent it on cars and they left the farm towns. Bye bye Ohio, bye bye Iowa, bye bye Utah. And they came out to LA for sunny weather and to spend their money. The movie studios were also popping up everywhere. So there was a population explosion. That would make sense why Charles chose Los Angeles. It was also the start of prohibition, which would last 13 years. This was a perfect time to get people addicted to something they could actually buy legally, and that's chocolate. <laughs> Charles and Flo and the two kiddos and the one in the oven moved into a California bungalow in Pasadena. That was about 1921 when he opened his first store at 135 North Western Avenue. Let's have a look at that today. understood the power of image. He also understood how important it was to have a brand that people could connect with and trust. It needed to have a face, one that would pull on your heartstrings. He turned his attention towards a little brand that was emerging at the time, Betty Crocker. Charles immediately recognized though that his mother's face was already a competitive advantage over Betty Crocker. You see, Mary C was real. Betty Crocker wasn't. What? You see, Betty Crocker was a made up name. They chose the name Betty because it was friendly. The name Crocker was actually the surname of a director who was retiring from the company. Betty Crocker is fake news. By 1922, Charles already had four locations in operation, but he wanted more. And they all look like Fanny Farmer. What a coincidence. During a business trip to Europe, he actually got a brilliant idea. Motorcycles. He wanted to offer personalized delivery to your door using a motorcycle custom made by Indian motorcycles and the sidecar, a little white cottage with lace curtains. Well, this caught the eye of Hollywood. Nothing tells your mistress that she gave a performance of a lifetime last night than a box of C's candy. By the fourth year, C's candy had 12 locations. Not quite a baker's dozen, but damn close. <laughs> and soon Charles and Flo and the three kids were moving on up into Beverly Hill. Charles and Mary though, unfortunately would die. Goodbye. Before they would see the famous I Love Lucy episode called Job Switching. The episode was actually filmed on location at the C's Kitchen in Los Angeles. I personally, have never been a big I Love Lucy fan. And it took watching that episode for me to realize I'm still not a big fan. Sorry. After Charles and Mary bye bye 
the business was left to his two sons, Lawrence, the smarter one, and Charles Jr., or Charles II, because Charles' father was Charles, and then there was Charles, and then... Just call him Harry. He had baby Charles, so... Charles III, right? Lawrence actually went to Stanford University. Playboy brother Harry. Just call him Harry. I guess just counted his money. Lawrence had some big ideas on what he wanted C's to be. He was actually a pioneer when it came to partnering up with malls because what mall doesn't have a C's candy? He also opened the first international location in Hong Kong. There was one more big decision that Lawrence made. That was to stop making chocolate. That's right. One of his classmates from Stanford also happened to be an heir to a chocolate fortune, the Guitard family, like Guitar with a D. I believe his name was Horace because that's what you called your kids back then. Horace Guitard and Lawrence became buds and Lawrence decided to make a deal with him. Guitard would start making all of their chocolate as they do to this day. Wait, are you serious? Yeah. I can't even, I just can't. I know how you're feeling right now and I felt betrayed as well. And you know what? We're just getting started. Karma would find his way to Lawrence and Lawrence died. Bye Lawrence! And that left Harry. That left Playboy Harry. Just call him Harry. Well, Harry was very busy doing non-chocolate making stuff. Harry was flying planes and he was yachting. He was also opening wineries up in Napa, so he didn't have time for C's. He didn't have time for bonbons and brittle. He put the company up for sale, and he put it up for a price that was so high, nobody wanted to touch it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry he sold you out. Except for one man, Warren Buffett. Talk about Warren for a second. Warren Buffett, he and Charlie Munger own a little company called Berkshire Hathaway, but they own companies like Dairy Queen, Justin Boots, Benbridge Jewelers, NetJets, and Pampered Chef. I guess they're still around. I used to call them the cooking cult. I can't remember the last time I went to a Pampered Chef party, and I Hope I'm not invited to another one ever. You see, Warren isn't just a billionaire. Warren is the billionaire's billionaire. He's frugal, thrifty, loves McDonald's, and also a huge fan of open marriages. When Warren purchased Seas Candy, he was only 40 years old. And in fact, he had to be talked into buying it. They decided to make some changes of their own and boy did they ever make some changes. And those changes did not go over well at all. In comes Charles number four, Charles Huggins. You can just call him Chuck and I think it would be easier than assigning all these numbers to Charles. There was just a lot of Charles going on. A lot of Charles that were in charge. But Chuck ended up being the new CEO, president, and referee. What Chuck didn't know is he was also going to become the fall guy. What do they make Chuck do first? Discontinue 14 different recipes. Easy, right? Everyone's fine with change, especially C's Candy customers, especially a brand that's been around for 50 years already with recipes that were still being sold by the Mother Mary in her sweet little country cottage in Canada that's actually on every box. What could possibly go wrong? The customers were pissed and they let Charlie and Warren know. Two received severe backlash. Maple wanna creams and marshmints. Now I'm gonna tell you up front that marshmints remind me of palm scum, but apparently they were very popular with ladies that were very articulate letter writers. A pox on all at seas who participated in the abominable decision. May your new truffles melt in transit. May your costs go up 
and your profits down. We are investigating the possibility of obtaining a mandatory injunction requiring you to supply us. I really wanted to get in touch with some of these passionate customers and well, I was able to come across two. Hello? Hi, I wanted to order a box of maple walnut creams. You deliver to Port Charles. Okay, good. This is Laura Spencer, but my checks will say Laura Scorpio. Discontinued? What? No, 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 no. Look, I know he told you to forget the past, but not all the memories were bad, right? You just don't want us to be together. Living without the creams is like living without a part of myself. No, no. Hello? Yes, this is Deborah Debra. Over at one, two, three, four, Country Club Drive. Listen, I'm having a party on Saturday night, and I'm going to need 17 boxes of marshmallows. Gone. Never coming back. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. As a friend, there never was a marshment. Are you calling me a liar? I find that simply amusing. Darling, it's Warren who deserves your petty little insults. Not I. Let's talk about what's going to happen with C's today because Warren is old and his business partner Charlie is I believe 97 he's still sharper than most 30 year olds that I know let me give you a quote when he first was in ownership of C's he said this company is going to gush cash for decades to date has actually made him two billion dollars of course you can subtract out the 40 million that has have gone in for capital investments but you won't see them sponsor any Peloton rides, and you won't see them merge with any other candy bar brands. So unfortunately, you're not gonna see any Seize Mars, Seize Joy, or Seize Payday, although that would be awesome. Another thing you're not going to see is Warren Buffett engage in Twitter fights with people like Elon Musk, who I think will pretty much fight any billionaire that he just deems would be interesting. Back in 2016, I believe, I said to Elon, if you don't agree with my way of doing business at Seas, which is creating this moat around the company, this impenetrable moat. I don't even know if I said that word right, but I'm impressed I even attempted. Elon just thought that was absolutely ridiculous. First of all, I think most are late. And threatened his philosophy by saying that he was going to start his own candy company, specifically a peanut brittle brand that was mirrored after his boring company. But Warren did not engage in that little Twitter argument. In fact, Warren won't engage with anyone. He's too rich and too old to care. You will see a new store in Dubai, just in case you're cruising by. That's really all you're going to see. You see, this company has been nothing but a cash cow to Warren. It's the reason he was able to become a major shareholder in Coca-Cola. So this guy likes to hang on to his money. Seas isn't going anywhere. I did a lot of research on this project just because it was so interesting. I did a timeline of all the deaths in the C's family and it just seemed like every five years somebody was dropping off whether it was the mother and then it was Charles and then Charles wife and then it was Lawrence and then it was I feel like I'm missing somebody oh they had a sister she went bye bye, -bye as well. everybody and the last remaining heir which would have been Harry which would have been Charles the third he outlived his brother by 30 years. And you know, all through this book, 
all through the internet, very little mention of Harry. Literally nothing mentioned about him. I'm guessing there wasn't much to say. Just call him Harry. And it was probably a good thing that he didn't want to participate in his family business because God only knows where C's would be today. I would have had many Christmases with an empty bottom of the stocking where the molasses chips should have been. Mm -hmm.